Srila Prabhupada gave the example that for a kitten, the cat is the most protective, loving mother. But for the rat, the cat is death personified. So when the kitten is in the mouth of the cat, there's no place anywhere that it would rather be than in the mouth being carried by mother. But for the rat, there's no place it's more f afraid of than to be in the mouth of the cat. What is the difference? Same mouth, same cat. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, I am death personified. For a devotee, even Krishna in the form of death is the all-protecting, nourishing, loving mother. But for a materialist, it's the most horrible thing to dread and to fear. So painful disease, which is racking the body with all sorts of discomforts and invalidity, nobody wants it. We try to fight against it, it's our duty. But if it comes beyond our control, for a materialistic person, it's simply horrible. But for a devotee, it's a benediction. Because a devotee sees through the eyes of faith, eyes of faith in the truth, that ultimately Krishna is the controller of all controllers. He is the cause of all causes. Sarva karana karanam, the cause of all causes. We saw in Srila Bhakti Tirtha Swami, even the most miserable physical condition that anyone could possibly have to go through. He was weeping in gratitude and happiness and said he would not change his situation for anything else in the world. Hare Krishna. Because he was feeling Krishna's love so deeply in that circumstance. Stoka Krishna Prabhu, we have seen, he was always a nice devotee. He was always sincere and struggling to control his mind and senses and to perform nice service and to please his guru and the Vaishnavas. Always very sincere soul. But the disease and the imminent death that he's facing has made him grow. His realizations are so deep. His love for Krishna has expanded like never before. It is a fact. Now on a Saturday morning, which is the prime time for Srimad Bhagavatam class, it's given to him. If he wasn't sick like this, there would be no question of Stoka Krishna giving a Saturday morning class. <laughs> yes? If he sat in the asana, people would say, get out from here. But now people are listening to him all over the world. Why? They're not listening to him because he's dying. That's not the reason. There's so many people dying. They're listening to him because of the gratitude, the positive Krishna conscious realizations that he has in those situations. It's an inspiration for us. It increases our faith, our love. We want to follow in his footsteps. So yes, although it's a horrible thing on one level that a devotee may soon be leaving this world, it's a benediction. He's seeing it as such and therefore it becomes. His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami on several occasions told me 
that if I lived in good health for another 30 years, in that 30 years I could not do the quantitative and qualitative service that I'm doing for the Vaishnav community as I'm being allowed to do in the last six months on my deathbed. <clears throat> I could not affect people's hearts in 30 years the way I have done in six months. Therefore, I consider this cancer to be a great benediction in my life because it's providing the opportunity to do greater service to the devotees. So he's not just seeing it as an accident. He's seeing it as an arrangement of the Lord. And that is what this story of Kurma Avatar represents. Great difficulties come into our lives, great obstacles, sometimes impediments to our service of the Lord. But Advaita Charya in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat he described that the impediments that come in the path of a devotee's lives are actually servants of the Lord. Those impediments are just what we need to spiritually grow. We may not understand intellectually exactly the details of how and why, but God cannot be understood intellectually because God is beyond the intelligence. The intelligence is a sense. It's a material element. Just as Sita, the real Sita, could not be touched by Ravana. It was the illusory Sita that he got. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he explained this, that the Supreme Personality as Godhead is beyond the grasps of the mind and senses. We must understand the Lord through something that transports our consciousness beyond the limitations and relativities of this world. And that is called faith. The foundational substance of spiritual life is our faith. And we must use our intelligence to the capacity we have to understand the validity of such faith, to convince our minds to accept such faith. Faith can transport the consciousness from the material world to the spiritual world. But that faith must be in the Word of God, which is transported in this world generation after generation through parampara, guru, sadhu, and shastra. And to increase faith is to come closer to God. And that is the duty of every devotee in the association of other devotees, is to act, speak, and live in such a way to help increase other people's faith as well as our own. It is all important. If we act recklessly, we can disturb other people's faith. And that is a great, great disservice. In fact, there is no greater disservice we can do than disturb another person's faith in the evolution and development of their faith. We should be there to help each other in this regard. And that is why association of devotees is so sacred, because it nourishes faith. Whereas associating with people who are too much addicted to materialistic conceptions, their association challenges.
challenges our faith. has the power to distract our faith. And to lose faith is the greatest loss. To lose money, to lose prestige, even to lose health, even to lose one's physical life, is not such a loss. But to lose faith means disconnecting ourselves from the Lord or the possibility to reunite with the Lord. So it must be protected very carefully. So death, disease, if we see through the eyes of faith, if we see that yes, Maybe I'm the cause of some of the things that have been done that are, that are causing me pain, but the Lord is giving me a reaction just according to the perfect plan that he has made for my benefit. Therefore, it is a benediction. And to see that benediction and to reciprocate is the basis of making spiritual advancement. And therefore, practically all of the great souls of the past have gone through many difficulties, just to show us the way. They never give, never give up faith, never give up endeavoring, and always see it as an opportunity to grow. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. When Lord Chaitanya was in Kurmakshetra, the Kurma Brahman came to see him. But previously, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was dancing in ecstatic love before the deity of Kurma. Yes? He was chanting the holy names. His limbs were trembling. His hairs were standing on end. His tears were pouring from his eyes, worshiping Kurmadev in Kurmakshetra. How beautiful. He was seeing Krishna in the form of that tortoise. He was not seeing that the tortoise was, the repres was simply some material representation of Krishna. He was seeing in the beauty of that deity, he was seeing that Krishna has appeared in this form. And therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was teaching us what is a real devotee. To love Krishna means to love everything about Krishna. And to love Krishna's relationships in different ways with other devotees in various forms. Hare Krishna.